there. Welcome everybody to Casting Notes from Rose and Kim. I'm Rose Rosen. This is Kim Swanson. She's a casting director in Los Angeles. I'm a casting director in Florida. And how are you today? I'm great, Rose. It's good to see you. It's been a while. I know. It's been so long. <laughs> so long. So good to see you. We, we don't stay too far apart though, do we? No, we don't. How yeah, are you doing no. today? Good, good. You've been busy working, haven't you? I have. I'm very lucky. I work a lot, so I cannot complain. But talk about working, though. You know, it's award season right now. Right. And so many movies are getting some buzz, and there is one that's getting a lot of buzz. A lot. And we are fortunate enough to have the exact producer of that. We are fortunate indeed. And it's Sarah Schroeder. Come on out, Sarah. There you are. Hi. Oh, hi. hi, Sarah. Hi. hi. Thanks for joining us. Well, thanks for having me. It was great. I was excited to come on the show. So well, fun. So for fun. those of who, who don't know, Sarah's exec producer on it's the trial of Chicago seven is the actual title, correct? That's it. The trial of the Chicago seven. Oh, yeah. Chicago seven. Okay. Cause yeah. I keep saying the Chicago seven shortened version. So yeah. Anyway, which is a movie getting a lot of buzz right now. So Bravo is exec producer on that. I happen to <laughs> love that movie. I really did. I remember seeing that in previews and, you know, going out and individually telling some, some Instagram friends, you got to watch this movie. They're like, I haven't even heard of it, <laughs> but yeah. So here we are, every single award coming at you guys. Isn't that fun? It's been a blast. Um, we just got the SAG award, the ensemble cast. So right. that was awesome. We're like, like yeah. a casting director award. <laughs> let's just say it. Yes. Even though they don't well. mention us in the award. That's another story, but well, we I would have, if, I would have mentioned you. Thank, <laughs> you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I know, you know, when you and I do something together and it wins an award, you'll, you'll be sure to mention me. hundred <laughs> percent. And Kim, you're at you too. You oh, got that's that. It. That's Thank it. You. Well, but you no, know, I was very fortunate to be involved with the, that project and, um, Yes, and Aaron Sorkin is amazing. Sasha Baron Cohen. I mean, the cast is incredible. Frank Langell. I mean, yeah, it's yeah. a dream team. You did. Yeah. You had a, you had a dream cast, a dream team on that, and so bravo. Good yeah, for you. That, that you. also means a lot of work. People don't realize how much time and effort goes into it before it even gets to the first day of shooting, right? right. And as an exec producer, boy, you know how much work went into that. <laughs> It, it's it's interesting because every project's different, but definitely we came in a little later on the trial of Chicago's uh, trial of the Chicago Seven. Um, but you know, on Not Alone, when we did that one, I was there every day. Rose knows we we worked you know twenty four seven getting that ready on uh, the Chicago Seven movie. I came in a little bit later, but it was interesting because we already had most of the cast. And Steve Maskins, my husband, he read the script and he's like, we need to do this. And we are lucky because we're partners with Cross Creek Media. So we get to pick and choose some of the projects we want to be involved in. And we had uh, finished three movies that year. So I was a little tired and I was like, I don't know if I want to do another movie. But um, after reading the script and the talent and then Steven Spielberg came on with uh, DreamWorks, I was like, this is a no brainer. We are going in and doing it. And then we were fortunate enough to be on set some and yeah, it was great. And, you know, I will give Tyler Thompson a lot of credit because he felt like this had an award potential run and he was right. He was right. And when I read the script, I could see why you would think that, but you always think, oh, maybe, but it's, it's actually going the distance. So we'll see on the 25th, what happens. Yeah, right. Great. It's, it's so, so interesting. So interesting. And what I like about you is the way you mix your creativity with your business side. Um, the fact that you're an actress and an executive producer that actually is, is in the trenches. Cause a lot of people take that credit, let's face it, just to have that credit, but I know you're actually involved in the executive producing. Can you speak to how do you do all that? It's so, it, it boggles my mind. 
well, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, I, just to put it bluntly, it's a yeah. lot of work. But I also thrive on that. I, I get, you know, I have to have something that's making me want to have passion about a project. So if I'm acting in it, that's great too. I'm playing a character. But if I'm just producing or executive producing, I'm still passionate about it. I want those actors to have the best chance possible to make that whatever is going to end up on that screen. And we all know it's done in the editing room. Right. That I want them to have the best chance. So I put my all into it because I know how it feels. Mm -hmm. I know how it feels when you get a, you look at the dailies and they're so dark and you're like, oh my God, we're going to have to reshoot that whole scene. And that's going to cost $50,000. And most actors don't even think about that. But when you're watching the budgets and helping <laughs> put the money together, you want to protect your investors too. So I think it, I like to protect my actors and I like to protect my investors. And that's for me, the most important thing. So when you're involved in a project as large as Chicago seven, do you, I mean, how, how, so you were on set, do you get to see dailies? Do you, I mean, like what, how, how, how in there are you? I know you like to be in there like 24 seven, but I also <laughs> know you're busy and they're doing other things too. Tell me how involved you can be in a project like that. Well, like I said, so Chicago seven, we came in uh, later. We helped the biggest thing we did on Chicago seven, because we only were on set like two or three days. So I was not in the trenches. I'll just be honest. Right. hundred percent of the time. Right. But we are on, uh, my husband's on the board and then Tyler Thompson and through the partnership, the biggest thing that we really did is at the very end, we came in, put together some financing, a piece that needed to be done. And then we'd already been on set. We weren't even, we were involved with the movie because we're part of the partnership, right? So we can go on set anytime we want. But we came in and then we made a decision, which was a tough decision because theaters were closed and somewhat kind of opening so when we went in I was like oh I just I hope we make the right choice and we don't I did not want to go into theaters with this movie because I didn't feel like people felt safe so we had um, about 10 of us on a call and we were watching Tenet we were following what he was going to do and he did go into theaters and it worked okay but eventually he pulled back he was even in drive-in theaters, which he pulled back and ended up going and selling it to iTunes. And I don't know if it's on Netflix, but it's definitely on iTunes. So he did, he kind of was the one that started it, you know, and we watched him and I really pushed and Steve too, that we did not want to go in theaters. We did not want to have print and advertising. And so you have your investment and then print and advertising comes in. I'm getting a little technical, but it goes in front of your investment. So you're behind all of it. So if they spend $30 million advertising this movie to get people to go crawling into the theater during COVID, not a good move. Mm. So I really, really pushed to, to make the deal with Netflix. Um, and Tyler felt the same way. We had a couple of people on the board that really wanted to have a the theatrical release, which I understand in a normal year. Aaron Sorkin being one of them, of course, would want that. I mean, that's what everybody wants, but it was a different year. So that for me with the business side that I thought that was a really smart decision. So for us, we came in at the end, like I told you, and then we were part of that. And that was the smartest decision we made. No, that's interesting. And that's, like I said, I, I love to listen to you think about this stuff that just this stuff interests me, but well, it was good. I'm telling you, if we would have went into theaters, I, I don't know what would have happened. I mean, we, we had Bloodshot that was in theaters and then we had to pull it. So after two weeks of being in theaters, we right. had to pull that and go direct to streaming. Right. And we couldn't open in China because, hello, we all know why. And then, um, you know, we just couldn't open in other countries. So, yeah, it's just every movie is a different different path, a different challenge. And that's what I kind of like. I never get bored in this business, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, and you don't just put your name on it, I guess is really the bottom line we're getting to. You really get involved and, and, and that's impressive. 
tell me a little bit about what you you tell a new actor at this point in in your career that's so vast and different. Mm -hmm. I love that you have, you have done acting yourself. So it's not like yeah. you've only done the financial end and that sort of thing, but you understand the creative side of it as well. So I think that's really helpful for the actors to know too. Well, thank you. I appreciate the compliment. That, I mean, acting to me is, it's such a vulnerable position to be in. And I've always been pretty strong in business and I owned my finance company before. So I had a background and then I, but I've always loved to sing and I've always loved to act. And I kind of left that when I was young because my brother, who was a director, told me the average actor made $2,000 a year. And, <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't know if I could even, you know, I mean, that was bad. And he really talked me out of it when I was 18. Probably the wise, wise move because I went and did some other stuff and then I got back into it later. So fast forward, um, yeah, so if I was gonna tell an actor what to do, first of all, don't take no for an answer. I mean, you're gonna get a lot of no's in this business. I've got no's, I've got rejected. I just look at a no as like, okay, well, next door, go, let's go, let's go forward, see what's next. Um, so don't ever let anybody tell you no and don't let anybody tell you not to go for your dreams. You gotta go for your dreams. If you don't, you're gonna be sitting on the sidelines. So. And then the other thing I would say is try to get involved and do some of your own projects because to me, that's what's helped me get a leg in um, doing my own projects. I did Man in the Chair was my first one. I had a first acting part across from Christopher Plummer. I raised all the money. I should have had a way bigger part now that I know. <laughs> <laughs> Now I learned, I'm like- Yeah, if you're in charge of the money, I think you're in charge of everything in some way. <laughs> you know, that just shows you how humble and humble pie beginnings I come from. Because I come from Payette, Idaho, a very small town. And I had no idea. I was like, I thought one line was good. And, or, you know, two. And I, I could have pushed that. And I honestly would never really do that. I think you, you need to earn it. And I was pretty young and raw at that point. So the one line was perfect. And I you learned that with Christopher Plummer. Yeah, it was, it was good. It was good. It's in my EPK, sweetheart. So I'll, yeah. I'll, send, it, I'll send that to you. EPK, uh, that's an extended play. It's an electronic press kit. That's it. <laughs> yeah, it's not a, a lot. Of, <laughs> it's not <yeah>. a <laughs> extended play <laughs> list. <laughs> what are we talking about? So, <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna lose Kim. She's gonna. She had to go on mute. She's dying. <laughs> no, sweetheart. It's electronic press kit, and what it is is kind of a behind the scenes. And um, you show your talents. So if you sing, you show some. You show some singing, and if you act, you show some acting, some of your reels, and and then um, producing. I didn't really put anything in there. I just I just really combined it. So it's four minutes. You can watch it on YouTube, honey. Yes, yes, yes of course. I've seen your your music video. That's that's the music and not alone. That's terrific. Oh, and thank you. Yes, um, so much fun. I have so to tell you. Yeah, I loved that. You yeah, really can be free. Yeah, yeah, so, awesome. Yeah. I I do think that that creative aspect and and there's something specifically that's anything music related. I think just really fills your soul in a way that non musical things can't. Whether it's dance or playing an instrument or singing, some music just fills us away. Yeah. Right. No, but I love that you're, you know, you're promoting actors to use all their talents and people in general use all your talents. That's a, that's such a brilliant thing to think about and for people to really, you know, use all your talents. Why not? You know, we got them there and, you know, yeah. you just got to hone them and use them and you do that so tremendously. And the fact that, you know, you know, coming from an actor standpoint and, a businesswoman that you know that owning your own projects is a smart way to go and that you figured out how to do that i mean oprah did you know <laughs> lucille ball did lucille, lucille yeah. ball. so but no. but the truth is we probably need to look to some of those big titans 
Mm -hmm. and 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 yourself there aren't that many Mm -hmm. and so thank Mm -hmm. you for being a progressive woman and owning that and and you know and giving that back to the women in the industry it's so it's so great yeah i really think they should pull out all their talents and and maybe even do a short i mean direct a short act in a short like you can do it very cost effective and you you start getting the the more film out there, I mean, my friend Jenna, who is Jenna Rollins, says, shoot, 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 look at the cast of Eddie's. I mean, they shot every day at their house. It was just a new movie was being shot. It was a party in a movie. And I think if you get a camera, you can shoot, you can shoot on a phone now. So right. just always try to get on film as much as you can as an actor and try to control your own projects. It's brilliant, it's brilliant. Thank you for coming. Okay. And I mean, this was such an interesting conversation as they yeah. always are with you. Thank you. And I hope everybody likes and subscribes to our YouTube channel here and follow Sarah. We'll drop her links in and thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Yes. It was great to have you. Thank you, Kim. Thanks, Rose. We'll talk later. Bye. <laughs>